Well, today we have a video here from Mom on the Spectrum, and it is the late diagnosed autistic adult bingo. I am not a late diagnosed autistic adult bingo myself. <laughs> um, I'm sort of middling diagnosed, diagnosed when I was around 10, but I'm sure that a lot of these things I will be able to relate on. These are 25 common autistic experiences, and we're going to have a look at these, see if any of it rings true. And um, yeah, from Mom on the Spectrum. Love it. She's great. Hi, I'm Taylor with Mom on the Spectrum, and today I've got a fun little bingo card for late diagnosed autistic adults. You can get your own copy through a link in the description if Ooh. you want to print one out for yourself. This is just for fun. It's not a diagnostic tool. I'm not a diagnostician. I'm not a psychologist. I'm a late diagnosed autistic mom of two, Neither. and I'm here to share resources and information to help other autistic adults like me. If that sounds helpful. Can we just, can we just marvel at just like the amazing jawline that Taylor has? Like, I don't think I've seen a stronger jawline in in all of my time on the internet. It's got a real, real, real quality feature there. Now that we're on the topic of faces. Hello, Julie. Nice to see you. Helpful to you. Please consider subscribing to the channel and giving this video a thumbs up. And if you want to keep track of how many you relate to as we go through the bingo card, I'd love to hear your score in the comments, whatever that means. So just to be clear, even if you cross off every single thing on this bingo card, it does not necessarily mean that you are on the spectrum. I just have the privilege of getting to work with the autistic community every day. I teach classes, I hold webinars, and I'm constantly learning from others in the community from my own experiences as well. And I've just compiled this fun little bingo card so that we can connect with each other about things that we might have experienced together. So first up, People pleasing tendencies. Hello. Abs not me. I'm not a people pleaser. <laughs> I'm very trait. Just I'm very disagreeable. Very low in agreeableness. Um, I don't tend to try to please people very much. That sounds awful, doesn't it? I don't mean it like that. <laughs> that's not a. That's not a. Not a tick for me. Um, oh my god. That did not come across in the best way. <laughs> Absolutely. I think that this can kind of go hand in hand with masking. Somebody told me before that they feel like an antenna whenever they walk in the room, like they immediately pick up on other people's emotions and the energy of the room. And I think because we're we're used to, generally speaking, getting in tune with other people and what they're wanting from us, hence the masking and all of that, I think that we become pretty good at people pleasing and putting ourselves on the back burner. Second. No. Well, I definitely agree I agree with that. I think that's kind of like some some of the cornerstones of masking. I think when it whenever I, I've masked it's been in my experience it's been as like a, a sort of like a tool, you know, particularly during times of of confrontation. Um when it came came to like making friends and dating and things like that, but I've never been much of a people pleaser. Although when I am like when I when I'm very very close to somebody, I am, but to to random people to strangers, not really. Um, I think I think it used to be used to be a lot more like that. I've, I'm kind of shifting away, trying to sort of perhaps a bit be a bit more selfish. It sounds awful, but try try and think of myself a bit more when it comes to interpersonal relationships. But I can see why that's that might be quite common for some people. I'm a people pleaser until I'm not. Yes, I, I relate to that, Paula. You have to manage everyone's emotions before they can begin to listen to us. I was Fergie says I was a people pleaser once. It took me ages to get out of that toxic behaviour. I find it, I find people pleasing to be authentic. Yes, yes. Um, I don't I don't know if if any of you have have this experience, but um, I've never really come across somebody or had an interaction with somebody. And not being, and and being like incorrect about what that person is like, um, it doesn't tend to happen to me a lot. <laughs> I know it's it's kind of a kind of a rogue question there, but I'd be interested to hear if you guys have the same experience. Um, but when it comes to people who are like people pleasing, I can tell. Like I can tell. Like sometimes I try and take it genuinely and at face value because that's just like how I like to conduct myself, but. I can definitely tell sometimes, but most of the, I'd I'd say pretty much all of the time I can tell. Very broad, very very, <laughs> very very uh, controversial statement, maybe. Always okay, most of the time. 
I'm going to change it up. Second one, we're going to go straight across. Routines are sacred. That's yes. kind of part of the autistic experience. We like our routines. Please don't mess with them. But if you're ADHD, you have ADHD too. That's where things get interesting because then routines are not so fun. Third thing on the list, trouble getting into bed. Transitions can be especially difficult for people on the spectrum. And I've heard time and time again that so many of us just get stuck like on the couch before bed because that transition going from the end of the day to the night, it's just really hard. For For me, it doesn't tend to be as much related to the evening because I really like like, um, I really like being in my safe space, my, my bed. Uh, the transition that I find the hardest is the mornings. That tends to be the worst thing for me. Getting out of bed. Whole issue. It's really bad. Can, can you read us now? <laughs> not from, um, not from like messages. <laughs> you know, it's more like, um, when I meet people, you know. I have a happy way of seeing others, so I don't pick up on, pick up if there are red flags. Mm. Don't know if you're if you're being bullied either. Interesting. Fourth, secret stems. So stemming is any repeated physical nope. movement that we have that helps us move energy that gets kind of stuck in our body when our nervous system gets dysregulated. Secret stems can be things that we do discreetly so that it doesn't like upset other people. So it could be picking at our skin, our hair, our nails. A lot of people tell me they scrunch their toes in their shoe because nobody can see that. Next one is knowing more about others than yourself. This can be, again, kind of due to our people-pleasing tendencies. We might know what other people want and need before we know what we want or need. Second mm. row, listening to- I I think I would, I would agree with that one, but I think the reason for it is not because I'm- sort of externally focused towards other people. I do tre- tend to want to know a lot about people just because I like to know who, know who someone is, you know, but I think it's mo- more of a question about actually knowing what I want and knowing how I feel, like the whole Alexa me thing. It can take me a long time to like really process things and understand myself, but I think that's more, more of a, a thing related to, to me and less about like, the focus that I have myself, you know. Are ticks considered stimming? No. Um, I, it kind of comes under sim- a similar um, umbrella, I guess, but I don't think they are considered stimming. Like, uh, ticks don't tend to, for me, be relaxing. <laughs> they tend to happen when I'm not doing well. Doesn't doesn't tend to help the situation, you know. I agree, but to the Alex me being the reason, hmm. Cheek biting, skin picking. I understand that. I do have a stim. I have a stim toy, which I really love, and you need to know about it. Where is it? Ugh. This little beauty, which is covered in hair because it's fallen on my floor, is an acupressure ring. My god. These things are absolutely heaven. They're like the best, like proprioceptive input. Basically what you do is you just like, it's it's kind of metal and it's quite a strong sort of sensation, but they, they basically like give your fingers a massage. They're so good. They're like my favorite, favorite sort of anxiety reducing thing. There's not a lot of things that, that sort of help me when it comes to like stimming and anxiety reduction, but acupressure rings, 100%. They're not the most reliable of things, but you do tend to get them in bulk, particularly on Amazon. If you do want to check those out, I do have an Amazon storefront, which do does have acupressure rings on. They're pretty cheap. You get them in like packs of 30. They've got all sorts of different colors, but they're, they're grand. They really are. Budget stim toy. <laughs> Sing to the same song over and over. I'm not going to say too much about that. Other than if that's you, let me know in the comments which song it is for you. For me, it's September by Earth, Wind & Fire. Second one on the second row, <laughs> stomach issues. Unfortunately, this is... Mine's mine's a little bit more explicit. <laughs> it tends to be very, very aggressive songs. And so we're not, I will not distribute... <laughs> It's very, very common Stomach with people issues, on the yeah. spectrum. Gastrointestinal issues, dietary allergies. It's not fun, but it's part of many of our experiences. Kind of related, sticking to safe foods. So if you're on the spectrum, you probably have some foods that have like safe textures that always 
or almost always feel good to eat. For me, it's french fries. Like sometimes I have a hard time eating sweets, french fries, french fries, chips. They're called chips. <sighs> chips. Oh, so good. Sometimes, sometimes places like fast food places do them really well. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they're like really soggy, but sometimes, and this is the, the time that I live for, getting a pack of chips and they're just being cooked to absolute perfection. It's beautiful. Love it. Um, I think m most of the reasons to why, like, I have safe foods is less about not liking the food and just more about the combination of textures and flavors. Like sometimes I, I just want something to be one texture and one flavor and that will actually most of the time. And that's why I tend to like throughout the day, I will basically just have like protein shakes. Sometimes I'll have some like lean beef jerky. Sometimes I'll have fr like a lot of the time I'll have fruits, yogurts. Um, most of, most of my eating during the day tends to come in, in that flavor. It's only in the evening, like pretty much like once a day that I can handle like a fully sort of decked out meal, you know, because a lot of the times these meals, they tend to come with a lot of different textures and a lot of different flavors. And sometimes they're mixed up into one. Um, like for me, my, my perfect meal is steak and chips. Why? Because the steak is separate from the chips. I eat the steak. It tastes like a steak. It has that te texture of a steak and it's nice. And then I have the chips and those are good. And they're just plain and then bland and they're great. Have a few veggies on the side, golden. Mix them all together in some kind of like steak pasta thing. Ugh. No way. Even if it's just like the same things, you know. <laughs> oh my God. It's annoying though. Cause like a lot of dishes, which don't take a lot of time to prepare, you can, it's like, like stir fries. Doesn't take you that much time to prepare it, but it's mixed. It's got loads of different flavors and sauces and textures and it's very overwhelming. Can only handle it at least once a day. Oh, are you going Jackie? Are you leaving? Are you leaving us? Yes. Um, for me, it's Macintosh apples. Mm. I love like a really gigantic, juicy apple, you know? I don't mean that in, in a euphemism type way. Fish and chips from Weatherspoons. How did you know, Antoni? <laughs> Antonio? You see, you, you, you've got a window. I think Jackie, Antonio has, has sequestered some of your third eye. <laughs> Lamb is nice. Ooh, yeah. Just not anything that's like too dry. I do find that chicken is often too dry for me, especially chicken breast. I'm more of a, I'm a leg guy. I'm a thigh guy, you know. I love the thighs. Being <laughs> things with different textures kind of maybe related to our fit. I have another video over avoidant restrictive food intake disorder if you're yes. interested in learning more about that. Mm. But my safe foods are french fries and this yeah. protein bar that I've eaten like a million yeah. of because it always tastes good to me. Next one is triggered by light touch. For whatever reason, so many of us on the spectrum get very easily upset if someone lightly touches us in any way. I need firm, deep pressure or else. Last one on the second. Mm. I don't know. I'm definitely more sensitive to light touch, but sometimes that can be nice. I like that sometimes. Not when I'm overstimulated or not when it's from, when it's like unwarranted, but it does, it does, it is nice. Like I am scared. Do you know, like um, if, when people like listen to ASMR, they get this, this experience of frizzins, you know, when they get this kind of tingly feeling that kind of sort of, starts from the place of, of contact and sort of tingles throughout your body. I love that. And the only way that I can really get that is through light touch or one of those, those head massages, one of those ones. Um, basically for me, head massages are like, um, disposable things. Cause I just ravage those head, head massages. As soon as I get my hands on one, I'm like constantly. Throughout the day, it's just the best feeling ever. I love it. But um, 
deep pressure tends to be more relaxing, you know. I need I need that deep pressure because it, it's it's quite relaxing for me, particularly as a stim, you know. Massages, my god. There is nothing that reduces my anxiety as much as having like a deep tissue massage. I'll be I'll be golden for like two days, like in bliss. If only I could um if only I could <laughs> I could afford such a such a thing. Light touch, depending on the situation, can be good, especially in fun time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree with you. Really depends on the situation and who 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 it is, you know. I like Farragon. Yes, yes, I do have I do have one of those. Maybe I'll add that to my Amazon store, um, storefront thing, because that can be really really helpful for me, especially when I'm melting down or very overstimulated or anxious. 100%. Second row, needing extra time to process what someone just said. Delayed processing yes. is a very common experience for people on the spectrum. Someone told me that their first response is usually a script, like a scripted response that has become familiar and safe to them. I need space by myself to process, especially a bigger idea or something important that someone just said outside of a social situation where I can just be by myself, process the information and then come back to the conversation. Third row, I can't hear you, the lights are too bright. If you understand what that means, X. Next one, making a list and immediately hating it. This is more related to the ADHD, autistic and ADHD combination that mm. I mentioned earlier. I make a list and I'm so proud of it and it's beautiful. And if I followed the list, all my problems would be solved. But then as soon as I make the list, I hate it and I don't want to do anything on it. Could be related to demand avoidance if you're interested I'm in not doing very that. Well the one in the middle, podcast. research mode. This is the one that's basically like the free space because I feel like everyone on the spectrum knows what research mode is. We just like to learn. A lot of times I like learning about random stuff that has absolutely nothing to do with my life. I'll just get fixated on the idea that like I need to understand how Bluetooth works or how to say something in a different language that I don't speak. It, like I just get fixated on these ideas and these things that I want to research, like what's behind walls and what are the steps for making a house i don't know that <laughs> is very interesting to me so all of these random what is behind walls i think it really depends <laughs> what's the what's on the other side of the wall sorry that was very sarcastic um yeah i get i get that a fair bit usually it tends to be around my special interests though i don't really experience that outside of my special interests unless it's something like science related that i want to understand from like a scientific psychological lens, I'll do that for sure. Um, most of the time, my researching tends to be either RuneScape or gym stuff. I'll just put on RuneScape tutorials, even if I know like what what the actual tutorial is and I know everything about that that said topic. I just like to hear it again. I don't know why. It's like, I could be watching something that's like entertaining or a TV show. I'm like, no, I got to watch the tutorial on how to get the most experience from the agility training method. <laughs> I need lists so bad. And I don't, I don't really use lists, but I do like to schedule. I do like to like plan out my month, you know, week by week. People act like I'm stupid when they don't respond right away. Yeah, I'm actually going to be producing a short at some point as around that. Um, it's this kind of idea of thin slice judgments, and I think processing time can definitely be um, one of the ways that people can misinterpret who we are and what we're like. You know, light touch is not good. She's pretty much describing me so far. <laughs> Scary. <laughs> uh, yes, I hate it when people talk too fast. Cut process it that quickly. Hmm. Do I talk too fast? I've actually been trying to speed up this, the pace at which I speak. Like, I think I'm doing pretty well at doing it, but um, I don't know. If you go back at some of my, my older videos, I do tend to be a lot more, especially podcasts, I tend to be very, very, very slow. But I think maybe that's just a skill that I've kind of got. I think they were talking about sort of common scripted phrases that you use for situations like that. I think for me, that's like phrases like, yeah, man, yeah, you know, something like that. I might do that. Um, hmm. Or use like, yeah, maybe, hmm, looking off to the side, like, 
processing it, looking away, and that te tends to be what I do. I don't know if you could consider that that part of it. You don't talk fast at all. I can talk fast. I don't really talk fast too. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I think now now this is t this is talking fast for me. I'm not I'm not a fast talker. I am a very very slow talker. This is this is like the the highest speed that I'm able to speak at really considerable considerably. I like your slower pace. Yes. I have one to do one of blocks when planning out my year. Mm. Yeah, maybe um yeah, I am trying to remove those what would you say the filler words? I'm trying to remove filler words from my vocabulary. It's very very difficult to. I've watched some some videos about being a more sort of charismatic speaker. Um they do suggest sort of removing filler words, but it's quite difficult actually because you you know, you've got to be on top of it and it's a very learnt behavior, you know. Random things that we just all of a sudden need to research and might become an expert on. The next one is sitting in your car for longer than you intended to. This again is kind of related to transitions. Yes. Transitions can be difficult for us 100%. on the spectrum. And a lot of us spend a lot of time in our car trying to figure out how to get to the next thing. The next one is that headphones make things better. So if you have a safe pair of headphones that you like putting on, when you put them on, you feel like you're in your own little world, in your own cocoon. X that one. Next row, sensitive 100%. to cat. Man, I, I don't know how I'd survive in this world without my noise-canceling earbuds. Um, if you are looking for some, um, <laughs> okay, I feel really shady, like, suggesting, like, my Amazon storefront stuff, but, like, I've put a lot of time into trying to, trying to like, fill it with stuff that I use on the daily. Um, but the Sony um, WXM... 5000s, whatever they're called. My God, they're amazing. Um, some people I know don't like having headphones on. I think before I used to use, I think JBL Live headphones. I don't have that on my storefront. Um, but those can, those can be really, really, really good. Uh, you want to try and find ones which are active noise cancelling because that kind of reduces, um, reduces background noise, but also, um, Allows you to hear voices and stuff like that, you know. Ooh, shady Amazon smiley emoji. <laughs> you want me to put that one on? Uh, maybe. <laughs> but check out your Amazon store. It's it's pretty cool. I've I've decked it out with stuff. You, the echo pressure rings are on there too. If you're looking to go to the gym, also there's some good stuff on there. Caffeine, alcohol, and or medication. Yes. So for me, 100%. I have to drink decaf coffee because if I have no. regular coffee, I'm gonna be so wide. No, I'm I'm the opposite. I'm the opposite of that. I'm undersensitive to medication. Well, to be honest, when it comes to antidepressants, you could argue that maybe I'm more sensitive because my anxiety tends to get pretty. I tend to get pretty wired when I'm just on my antidepressants, which is why I take like another medication which helps with the anxiety. Um, yeah, I mean, but with caffeine, alcohol, not a problem. I can drink like a horse. <laughs> I need to be able to stim with my hair as well. Yeah, I can't do that really. I suppose you could, maybe this is a stim. Is that a stim? Flicking my hair to the side? Alcohol, one and a half beer and drunk. I'm very envious of you. <laughs> I wish I was that. <laughs> it saves so much money going on ventures into the, the nightlife of Britain. So wired that I'm uncomfortable, even if it's like half a cup of caffeine. Alcohol, I'm a lightweight. I can tolerate hardly anything. And then medication, there are more studies coming out that are showing that autistic people can have paradoxical reactions to medications. Yeah. Just food for thought. Next that's That's been out there for a while. I don't know how how old this video is. Nine months ago, yeah, um, hundred percent, hundred percent. Um, I think uh, I think particularly they were looking at so the impact of benzodiazepines. So GABA, I think GABA A agonists. GABA is like the inhibitory sort of neurotransmitter in your brain. So when you take benzodiazepines like Valium, you might know it as Valium. You might know it as like diazepam. 
Uh, when you take those, it activates your GABA receptors. But for some autistic people, it can actually cause you more anxiety, which is a bit crazy. Beautiful Thomas Hair Shampoo Commercial. Sponsored by Amazon Storefront. <laughs> I'm trying to get sponsored by Sneak, by the way. I've sent in my... my well, not sponsored. I've sent in my, my application to, to be an affiliate. So maybe we might have some sneak adverts at some point, which I'm quite excited about, to be honest, because I love that stuff. It's beautiful. Next one is feeling what others are feeling. This is related to the antenna thing that I was talking about earlier. Mirroring. This is a, like a misconception about people on the spectrum that we're not empathetic. Many people on the spectrum are highly empathetic, even empathic. And oftentimes we take on the feelings of others. This happened to me. I was leading a class on dating and relationships the other day. And as soon as I started the session, I felt this overwhelming wave of grief that was co coming at me like collectively from everyone. I could feel everyone's grief and it was so overwhelming that I had tears in my eyes. Please tell me I'm not alone in my ability to do this. Next one is wanting to be alone, but feeling lonely. No explanation necessary. Next one is needing to know why for everything. Very closely related to yeah. research mode. Yeah. When someone asks you to do something, why? Don't ask me why, just do it. PDA kicks in. Tell me what to do. <laughs> oh my god. Um I think I just I feel, you know, I'm perhaps gonna go a bit deep here, but aren't we all lonely? We're all in our own heads. You know, no one can really understand and slip into our brains to experience life from our perspective. And we are not all alone in a fit, in a way. Hmm. Let's ponder it. Let's meditate on that on that question for a second. It's kinda nice. It's kinda good to know, you know? Somewhat. I immediately feel like someone tries to control me when they ask me to do something. <laughs> the BDA, that's deep. Extreme isolation since childhood. I'm sorry to hear that, Nerikiza. I'm sorry to hear that. I think um, my feelings of loneliness and isolation have been, like, alleviated a fair, fair bit by being a part of the autistic community. There's just some, there's something different about, like, people just, just kind of getting you and your experiences on, like, a very deep level that just is very, very difficult for neurotypicals to do. It's not to say that they can't. I, I've met some people who can, but, yeah. I think, to be honest, my feelings of loneliness gener is generally a side effect of, you know, having clinical depression for over 14 years. And it kind of does that to, to people, you know. <laughs> um, but no, I, I can understand that. It's like you, you want to have interaction with people, but you don't necessarily have the social battery, the energy to interact with people. It's a difficult one, for sure. Mode. This is particularly important to understand in kids and kids going through the education system at a young age. Tell them why. Help them understand why. It makes everything better. Next one is wishing other people asked good questions too. You get what I'm saying about yes. this, right? As an Clarity. autistic person and maybe related to needing to know why, I ask a lot of questions and I feel like I ask pretty darn good questions and I don't feel like it's often reciprocated back to me. Like I feel like non-autistic, allistic people, do you know how to ask questions? Sorry, that's a bit judgy, but... Next, comfy clothes always. Yes. yes. Sweatshirts, sweatpants, hair in a ponytail, preferred mode. Next one is easily upset by injustice. Dressing this is out. like so much more than just everyone being upset by injustice, right? Nobody likes injustice. But if there's any type of injustice happening in our current situation, we can't focus on anything else. No. I am definitely the type of person to like step into something, step into like a fight or a confrontation. If I believe that there is some injustice being done, even if it's nothing to do with me and I'd probably be better staying out of it, I just can't help myself. You know, it's it's probably not a good thing for me, but I just, you know, if, if I see like someone being treated badly for some various reason, I just can't stop myself from trying to help out. I have actually, when I've, when I've in my ventures at university into the nightclubs, um, I have actually stepped in between two guys fighting like <laughs> twice. I think when I when I saw it, I, it's just like a gut reaction. I think you know the malapropis says have to go like you 
like you all a lot. Thomas, it's been real. Thank you for doing this. Hope you're resilient and happy really soon. Well, thank you for joining us, my friend. It's good to have you on here. Have a good one. Yes, Prudence. I just got diagnosed at 1920, just before DSM-5. Interesting. I go into a real bad place because of littering and not caring about wildlife. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You want to protect people. 100%. Because we know what it's like, don't we? To be having justice being put up, put against us, you know, by other people in society. Until the injustice is addressed, which obviously makes the world a very difficult place to live in right now. Next one on the bottom row. Why isn't everyone as blunt as me? Wouldn't that be so great if everybody would just say exactly what they were thinking? I think that would be great. I think that being clear is being kind. And yes. I wish that other people would just be freaking blunt. Just tell me what you're thinking. I can handle it. I promise. Next one, not wanting Direct to appropriate sense. the term autistic. What does that mean? It means that a lot of autistic people, especially adults who have not yet been diagnosed, they feel bad for using the term autistic because they don't want to take it away from other people who need it more. Yes. Oh, that's such a big one. I feel like that impacts like so many of us. <laughs> like a lot of people that I've talked to, even people like very close to me within my own sort of family circle, you know. They don't um they d they just don't want to explore the idea of them being autistic because they just don't want to take the voice away from other people or appropriate the term. Or like, you know, they kind of see see other people, particularly myself, talking about the difficulties that I have due to being autistic, but they don't recognize those difficulties within themselves. They don't see it as sort of, um, how do you say? They don't, they don't, they don't say it as, as, as it, as impactful, you know, because they're so used to being how they are and they, they can't see themselves being autistic because they have an idea of what autism looks like and the struggles that autistic people face. And they don't see that in themselves, you know, it's really difficult to get people out of that headspace, but I think it's a, it's a bad headspace to be in because uh, if you if you think you're autistic, and you're pretty you're pretty sh pretty sure about it, and you're kind of engaging with the community and a lot of the advice that autistic people are giving and the experiences that they're sharing are really really relatable and helpful. Um, just continue doing that, you know. Even if you're not autistic, it doesn't really matter if you're finding some use from autistic people and you feel like you relate to them. Like, I can understand one, like, the whole idea of, you know, calling yourself autistic. I think that's, like, definitely be something to work through on the long term. But don't feel don't feel bad about, like, relating on, basically, on, on difficulties in life or um, thinking, that, thinking that you can't be autistic because you don't suffer enough in life or you don't have these particular difficulties because we're all different. We all have different profiles. We all have different traits. We all have different difficulties in life. And it's not always just, it's not even always related to autism, you know? Just signed on. Welcome back, Thomas. Hello, Marianne. How you doing? Nice to see you. Isabella says, I was very good at masking for a long time, but I noticed I can't filter myself as good anymore. So I just say what I mean. I, th I think that's great. Say what you mean. Be direct. Go for it. Some people will not like it. Most people will not like it. But some people, they'll they'll appreciate it. You know, it's nice just to be able to like ask someone a question and not have to think if they're altering it for your own benefit in some way or for their benefit. You know, I think there's a beauty in that. Kind of helps you to to know the other person better, to feel more connected when you can ask them a question and you can receive a direct response that's truthful. There's a whole subreddit mad about self-diagnosed autistics. I I am very well very well aware of that, and I've done many dives into videos related to that that kind of that culture. It's it's a tough one. It's not not to be discussed in this video, but you know maybe again. I love being autistic, even if my BDD is associated. I can't give up the joy I get from research and connecting the dots. Mm. Yes, what do they call it? Um, lateral thinking. Love the lateral thinking. Such a good, like, autistic trait. Amazing. 
Let me tell you, you're not appropriating it by using it if it helps you have more self-compassion for your own tendencies and patterns. You're not being selfish. You're not hurting other people. Nope. But this is a, a common concern that I hear a lot from the autistic community is I don't want to use the term and take it away from somebody else. Do you think... Do you, do you think that is related to the to the reactionary response that that people have got online? So I think that it maybe could be related to that in a sense. I'm not sure. I'm addicted to you now, my people now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is Odette saying? Discovering I'm autistic and relating so relating so of us has been such a weird feeling. I've never actually related to anyone else like this before. It doesn't feel real, but it has given me some hope. Oh, that is that is awesome. I'm so happy for you. Honestly, what does lateral thinking mean? Um, it's being able to tie in and connect the dots between two sort of seemingly separate concepts. You know, it's, it's quite a useful thing, actually, especially when trying to explain different aspects of the autistic experience, I would say. Oh, the bots timing you out again. <laughs> um. I think it times you out again. <laughs> oh no, Jackie. You're not having a good time with it. Um try n try not to do um caps, Jackie. If you do caps, too many caps. Um it doesn't like that, I don't think. I'll try and turn it off. It's 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 getting a bit annoying, but it's more of a as a, of a preventative measure to stop trolls, I would say. Invalidation can be difficult for people, hundred percent. I especially worry about parents of autistic children receiving my self-diagnosis as disrespectful. Yes, yes, because they do, they do see it that way, and that's that's an issue. Um, it's not good. It's not good. I mean, if you haven't watched that video about a trans people appropriating autism, you need to watch that one because that just illustrates the issue, the point of contention that is just definitely like a real big issue for autistic creators. And people. You're not. If there are words you can use to better describe your experiences and help you support yourself, nurture yourself, give yourself more compassion, show up more fully in the world, please do it. And the last one, planning things perfectly and being unable to execute. So for people on the spectrum, our executive functioning can often be impacted and we might have the best intentions. We might be able to plan on every nitty gritty little detail and focus in on all of the inner workings of things that need to happen in order for something to be executed flawlessly. But then when it actually comes time to transition into doing that thing that we've planned out perfectly, a breakdown can happen. Let me hear from you in the comments. How many of these did you check off? For me, I'm pretty sure it was every single one. And I wanna mention, because we talked about headphones here, if you haven't been able to find headphones or earbuds that you like, that make things better and not worse, you can try out Flare. This is my absolute favorite brand. They don't fully close off at the base of it so that sound still gets through. It doesn't block out sounds, it doesn't make things muffled. I've tried so many earbuds where it just blocks stuff out and it. I can hear myself chewing, I can hear myself talking, I don't like it. These earbuds by Flare, particularly their calmer earbuds, I use them all the time. And Interesting. I think for, for me, D-Buds have been probably the best ones for me. Um, they have like this little flick, like switch that you can do on the side. I do, I do have an affiliate link for them, but that's just because I find them really useful. They're not um, electronic, so you don't have to charge them. There's just like a little switch on the side that can like increase or decrease like the volume that's that's entering your ears. 